Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be talking about this system right here, this tropical system that is trying to develop off of the eastern coast of the United States. And as you can see, we are actually at a 60% chance of this developing over the next couple of days two days to be exact. So what is this storm going to do? How strong is it going to be? And where is it going to go? We're going to cover all of that uh, in today's video. And also out over there from the Pacific Northwest all the way to the central and northern plains, we are expecting some more severe weather and maybe even some tornado chances to ramp up here over the next couple of days. You can also see going into tomorrow, another severe weather chance and then going into day three, yet another severe weather chance and a lot of thunderstorm activity possible across the country here in the light green on all three of those days. So we're going to be telling you where and when these storms could be firing as well but before we get started make sure you hit that like and subscribe button it does help out the channel a lot we don't take any sponsorships or money from greedy corporations so any of your support will be greatly helpful in making sure there's actually an independent news media covering weather but yeah starting off with looking at our tropical system out here you can actually see you know we do have some cloud tops up here that are rather cold that's where these you know orange and reddish colors are coming from here indicating that we do have some healthy thunderstorm activity in and around the center of pressure of this storm at the current moment coming over to our visible satellite that spin starts to become a little bit better to see you can see we got some north to south movement here on the western side of this and we've got some south to north movement on the right side of this storm definitely indicating that we could have a surface center of rotation or circulation developing with our tropical low this is kind of what we are looking for right now in order to determine whether or not that this is a tropical depression or not if you come over to our radar that is just off of the coast here as well, you can see there's already some scattered showers out there, and you can actually see that movement here uh, of some of our storms and showers uh, kind of rotating around that center of low pressure. So it's located around in this area right now. As of right now, this is not a tropical depression or storm yet, but we are expecting that activity to ramp up as we go throughout the day today and going into tomorrow. And believe it or not, we're expecting this thing, if it does form, to make landfall somewhere in the Carolinas, whether it be South Carolina uh, or North Carolina. Most of our models are leaning towards South Carolina. In fact, if you look at our spaghetti model plots, which is essentially just telling us where some of these models are thinking this is going to go, the mass majority or about 80% to 90% of them do bring it into the South Carolina area. So we are going to be expecting some heavier rain, potentially some stronger winds, maybe a couple of power outages, definitely some rip currents and a little bit of storm surge is going to be possible uh, with this storm. Again, we're not really talking about a hurricane, so we're not going to be talking about any major impacts, but you can definitely see where this low pressure at least is going to go is most likely going to be over South Carolina. Coming over to our intensity forecast, and you can see that some models are pretty split here in terms of what we're going to be talking about in terms of peak intensity. We have a couple of models bringing this all the way up into tropical storm strength that means it would get a name in a lot of them not necessarily making it all the way to tropical storm strength though most of these are going to probably be a tropical depression as long as that center of circulation can form near the surface if you look at our water temperatures where this storm is right now you can see the water temperatures are plenty warm right now so that's really not going to be an issue again we're looking for anything over 26 degrees celsius and we've definitely got that right now pretty much across the entire area especially where we are expecting this thing to make landfall so water temperatures are really not going to be an issue for this storm you can see it's kind of on the edge so we're definitely not going to be expecting any weird you know last minute unpredictable rapid intensification with this storm but definitely enough to sustain tropical activity if it does get up to tropical depression or tropical storm strength now we don't have any planes investigating the storm right now but we're about to have a hurricane hunter plane make its way uh, out of mississippi it looks like it kind of just came out of gulfport it's flying over mobile right now if you live in the panhandle of florida maybe like the northern portion of the panhandle handle Florida. keep an eye out you might see a military looking plane that very well could be these hurricane hunters and they're going to be out over there probably within the next couple of hours so it would not surprise me that once that plane makes it out over here and does a couple of circles we actually get an official designation as a tropical depression as it does look like on satellite that center of circulation is starting to develop so next what we're going to do since we're kind of close to this thing actually forming we're going to start using our deterministic models and kind of comparing contrasting and between them and this is the gefs run and as you can see you know, over time, our storm is going to develop. It's saying about in 10, 11, which would be somewhere between a tropical depression to a weak tropical storm, most likely a tropical depression here from the GFS. We also have our hurricane models in as well. And as you can see, you know, they are also kind of bringing it around a 10, 10 to 10, 09. You can see there's not going to be a whole lot of precipitation near the center of low pressure, but that's probably where most of the wind is going to be. And it's also 
also probably going to be, uh, you know, pr pretty much around this entire area. You can see that we have anywhere from about 16 to 34 knots, you know, really extending from the center of low pressure, uh, potentially all the way up into northern Carolinas there. So there's definitely the potential here for some wind. Again, you know, your typical thunderstorm is going to have, you know, anywhere from 30 to 40 mile per hour winds. A severe thunderstorm is going to have upwards to 60 mile per hour winds. So it's not going to feel like unbearable amounts of winds or very scary amounts of winds, but it will be some wind for a while and add some moisture. Some areas might be seeing some trees get knocked down, but our biggest impacts are probably going to be the rip currents uh, here in and along the coast. So if you're out uh, on the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina, I would definitely be keeping an eye out uh, for some of those whip currents. And if you see a red flag warning, just don't go out and swim that day. A lot of people are probably going to be near the beach due to the 4th of July holiday. I would just exercise caution as this comes close. Even now, it's probably producing some rip currents before this thing even forms. And that's pretty much all my thoughts on it. And I just want to read the uh, National Hurricanes thoughts on this storm before you know we go move on to a different subject here. But they say uh, showers and thunderstorms have increased in association with an area of low pressure located about 100 miles off of the northeast coast. Uh, of Florida. Coastal environments or environmental conditions are forecast to be marginally conducive uh, for further development. A short-lived tropical subtropical depression could form late today into Saturday while the system drifts north. This low is expected to move inland over the southeastern United States Saturday night or early Sunday. So regardless of development, heavy rainfall is possible across portions of the west, central, and southwestern Florida through early Saturday and across sections of the Carolinas beginning on Saturday. An Air Force recon uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft is is scheduled and it's actually already in the air right now so we should see that upgrade i think in in the the nighttime hours here to a tropical depression now in other portions of our country we do have you know a couple of short waves out over here you can kind of see it here on satellite we've got these two little areas um of some low pressure that are about to move up into the northern plains bringing in some flow aloft which will allow for some severe weather to form we come over here to our day one forecast here you can see we have a slight risk all the way up here near aberdeen fargo grand forks going all the way up into international falls tornado risk is going to be a two percent out there it seems like the main threats with these storms is going to be wind a little bit of wind uh and some hail being possible our main threat being damaging winds and maybe a small chance uh, there for a tornado as well. So if you do live in anywhere in this green and yellow, I would definitely be keeping an eye out there for some severe weather. Now coming over to our simulated radar back over here into our slight risk, you can see that starting off by around 4 p.m. we are going to be expecting some thunderstorm development. If you look at our 850 millibar winds, you can see that they're not overly strong, but there is a little bit there. So that's why there is a little bit of a tornado chance today. Looking at our surface-based instability, obviously, as we are in the month of July, that's probably not going to be much of an issue, and it's not. We're got, talking about two to three, maybe even some isolated pockets of 4,000 joules per kilogram. So plenty of energy for these storms as they move off to the north and east uh, into areas like Fargo. You can see initially we might have a couple of storms, maybe a little bit more discreet over here in northeastern parts of South Dakota, and eventually that all kind of merges into a line so it's going to be really hard for a tornado to develop in this environment but if it can just tap into some of these parameters that we do have out here you can see we do have some isolated areas that are elevated here uh, on our significant tornado parameter especially over here moving into central uh, minnesota but there is a good chance that these storms will be too outflow dominant to really produce any tornadoes definitely something to keep an eye on regardless i do think you know throughout the day starting at around 4 p.m for southeastern and northeastern north and south dakota uh, at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., line of thunderstorms. And then as we move uh, past 9 p.m., uh, we are going to be seeing multiple areas uh, where some thunderstorm activity will be possible and some, you know, some severe weather activity, some damaging winds, highest chance there with these storms. Back over a little bit more to the west here, you can see that we do have that other short wave back over here. Could see a couple of thunderstorms pop up over on the border of Oregon and Idaho, or sorry, Washington. Is that Washington? No, that's Oregon. Sorry, Oregon and Idaho. Uh, and those will eventually rock it off to the north and east, bringing some scattered chances for some thunderstorms and potentially some severe weather. As we go into the next day, we're going to have that little first short wave still kind of moving off to the east. That will bring some scattered thunderstorms and some potential for some damaging winds. Looking at our tornado chances back over here, they are pretty much non-existent right now our only tornado chance for this day is going to be over here in parts of wyoming going into montana with this other shortwave trough that is back over here near great falls the main threat with this day is going to be damaging winds uh, and also some hail chances out there especially back over here into the western portion of this risk 
But as we get started by around 8 a.m., this little kind of outflow boundary or boundary, frontal boundary here, uh, some colder air and low pressure is going to be coming through this area, eventually running into some building instability or storm fuel out there. There's about a thousand joules per kilogram out in that area. A little bit of flow aloft as well will ha definitely help nudge these storms into initiation. And that is going to push off uh, to the east throughout the day, especially as we get into around 2 p.m. You can see those start to build even more uh, as that instability builds and then potentially we could have a line of thunderstorms here with some damaging wind potential here into Iowa going down into Des Moines and Cedar Rapids in between about 5 to around 9 p.m. where these storms start to really fizzle after that maybe some also a little bit more in the warm sector some severe thunderstorms could be possible near La Crosse uh, Madison over there near Oshkosh but again some damaging winds will be possible but that's about it with those storms back over here a little bit more of an organized severe weather threat uh, could occur maybe even a little bit higher of a tornado chance back over here as well coming over to our significant tornado parameter though you can see that it not really very elevated until we get into about 9 p.m. but still pretty much on the lower end so really not talking about too big of a chance uh, for tornadoes but sometimes with these little short wave troughs they can get a little bit spicy uh, unexpectedly out over there so I would definitely keep an eye out over here if you live near Billings going towards williston and dickinson with that slight risk uh it's some of these storms could carry some large hail and some damaging winds now further back to down to the south and east i do want to touch in on our tropical system out here and highlight where some of the rain could be possible with this thing as it approaches the coast as we go throughout the day it looks like some thunderstorms are going to be possible today going near columbia and florence near jacksonville as well those should be non-severe and eventually as our storm kind of comes into land keep in mind the h triple r is not really uh super accurate but around like the fifth and sixth that's when we're expecting this thing to make landfall before that happens we are going to see some storms off of the coast those should be non-tornadic um in nature and then on the right side quadrant that would probably be where our highest chance for tornadoes are but again you know our mo our model consensus is that this goes into south carolina the h triple r really doesn't have that great of a, a view on this storm but overall you can kind of just tell what the storm is going to be capable of just by looking at it on the h triple r here we're gonna have a couple spotty areas where this is gonna to be some wind uh, some spotty showers if we do get this part of the quadrant of the storm over land we might have a small tornado chance but typically with these tropicals depressions we really don't see too much vorticity not really leading to too much of a tornado chance but you know our damaging winds will most likely be over here south of charleston going into myrtle beach there some flooding will also be possible associated with that part of the storm but yeah generally overall i think the most impactful storm event at least for today could be this guy back down over here near kerrville we continue to see some heavier rain and more is to come we already have a flash flood emergency out here and i do think that you know you know damaging winds can cause power outages but man these flash flood emergencies especially this one uh, can be quite deadly so i definitely want folks back over here in texas to be weather aware as we even got more rain coming on top of what you guys have unfortunately already gotten last but certainly not least as we go into the peak heating of today widespread 70s to 80s maybe even some isolated pockets of 90s all the way pretty much in the entire east coast the only people that are staying cool are up here in the northeast also anybody that gets any of this rain and showers that we're expecting later on today will also cool down later on tonight also back over here into parts of central texas where we have that little mcs that's really not moving at all and it's probably going to stay pretty stationary over the next couple of days probably going to be relatively cool down there as a little bit of cloud cover and some light rain is going to be possible down there everybody else though is going to be really into the 90s and 80s out over here in the southeast going up into the ohio valley into the great lakes going overnight we're going to see that cold front kind of spread down to the south and east you can you can really see it as we transition into the nighttime hours by around 11 p.m you can see that cold air is really starting to build back in here finally getting into the 60s and cooling down quite a bit uh, behind that frontal boundary and it's going to stay cool for most of north and south dakota going into minnesota but man it is still going to be hot out over here in the ohio valley going all the way up into michigan down into florida down into the southeast and then eventually kind of making it really wherever the tropical storm or tropical depression isn't is probably still going to be up in the 90s and once you start getting some rain that's the only relief that you're going to be getting the northeast is going to stay relatively cool as well as well as the pacific northwest is staying pretty darn cool up there for it being summer but yeah after this system continues to push down to the south and east i am expecting some more uh heat relief to eventually 
move into the Ohio Valley. But yeah, that's what we're expecting for the next couple of days out over there for the severe weather, tropical weather, flooding, and temperature changes out there. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, yeah, I mean, if any of these days we have to go live, I will. If this thing turns into a tropical storm, we'll likely go live for this if it does make landfall, just to make sure no NATOs happen or if so many localized flooding, we can give some coverage to that as well. But I do appreciate everybody tuning in, continuing to support the video. Again, if you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please consider it. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.